You might notice that I have a French manicure today. These are fake stick-on nails because I'm just real classy like that. And um, I don't know, it's nice because I don't have to worry about keeping my nails super nice. I just stick these on and they make me feel part glamorous and then part like I'm going to an eighth grade dance. Hey guys, it's Rachel, and today we are making this adorable Halloween mirror glaze cake. I have not made a mirror glaze cake on my channel yet, which I know I'm definitely due for. I'm probably like a month late on this trend, but for Halloween, I thought it was perfect because with the black and white, it looks kind of like cobwebs and it's kind of spooky, but then I didn't want to make it too spooky, so I added the little smiling, actually they're not smiling. They're like little, little peeps ghosts, and they're super cute, and overall the cake is just so gorgeous, and the mirror glaze is actually really easy to do. When I was first watching, Watching mirror glaze tutorials, I thought it looked super complicated because you have to like boil it and then bring it down to a certain temperature and everything. But it turned out that after doing a little bit of testing on it, mirror glaze takes like 10 minutes to make. It's honestly so easy and it looks so cool in the end. And I will break it down step by step for you guys. So let's get started. First off, here I have two 8 inch red velvet layer cakes. I'm just gonna level these off. This may or may not be a box mix cake, but don't tell anybody. Today we're just gonna focus on the mirror glaze, so I wanted to keep it simple. I will leave a really good red velvet cake recipe though in the description box below if you're interested in making it homemade. Now we're just gonna lay down a little dollop of buttercream frosting on our turntable, and then just place down your first cake layer. Then I'm gonna grab some more buttercream frosting and just frost the center. And I'll leave the recipe for this buttercream frosting in the description box below. So smooth it out with your offset spatula. It can run over the sides a little bit, no need to make it perfectly clean now. Then pop on your top layer, and then we're going to crumb coat it. This is just a really nice thin layer of frosting that locks in any of those red velvet crumbs. Once you've finished off your crumb coat, just pop that off into the fridge for about 15 minutes just so it can firm up. Now that our crumb coat is set, we're just going to apply the final layer of frosting. You want to add on more than you think you're going to need, just so we can get a really nice smooth layer. Especially for a mirror glaze cake, it's always good to make this as smooth as possible, just so we get that really clean mirror glaze flawless finish. If you're having trouble getting it smooth, a really good thing to do is to dip your offset spatula in hot water and then smooth it out, and that'll kind of melt the frosting and make it really even. Once you've finished your final layer, just pop it off into the freezer for at least three hours. You really want to get it frozen cold. And now let's work on the mirror glaze. First off, you're going to need two packets of gelatin. Then add in a half cup of water. And just give that a little mix around. It's going to be kind of lumpy and weird at first, but just keep mixing that through and it'll eventually go smooth. Then set that aside for it to bloom. In a separate bowl, you'll also want to have prepped two cups of white chocolate chips. And just set those aside too. Now in a medium saucepan, you want one and a half cups of sugar. Then pour in two thirds cups of sweetened condensed milk. This is gonna make our glaze nice and shiny and beautiful and a little bit sweet too. Then add in another half cup of water and then just turn on the heat. And you wanna bring this to a simmer. It's gonna feel really thick and gelatinous at first, but just keep gently stirring that around and eventually it'll all be combined. You do want to make sure you stir constantly though, just so none of the sugar burns. Be gentle, you don't want to be mixing any kind of air bubbles into your mirror glaze. And then once it comes to a simmer, just go ahead and grab it off the heat. Then we're going to add in our bloom gelatin. I tried to add it in gently, and then as you can see, definitely failed. It kind of splashed in, but it's okay. Just try not to splash any of the mixture on yourself. And just stir that in until it's all smooth and melted. And now we're going to pour this over our chocolate chips. And that's why we had them prepped in the first place, just so we could do this right away. Let that sit for about three minutes, just so it can melt a bit. Then grab yourself a nice big spoon and just gently stir that around until it's nice and smooth. Look how beautiful it is already. It's so shiny, oh my goodness. And if you're feeling fancy, you can strain this. Honestly though, after I strained it, I found a total of like five little microscopic lumps that probably would have melted eventually, so it really wasn't worth washing a whole strainer and bowl for. Now at this point, we want to pour about a half cup into a little Pyrex. Then I'm going to add some white food color and just gently mix this through. You can probably notice a pattern here called don't whip the mirror glaze because you really don't want any air bubbles in the glaze. Now for our big bowl, we're going to add in a good amount of black gel food color. Looks kind of like smoke here, which I think is really cool. Looks kind of like ink. 
Very spooky, very Halloween-like too. And just mix that through. Here I went for a really nice deep dark black. It looks so cool this way, kind of like pen ink almost. And true to the name, you can actually see my reflection here, which is super cool. Not my reflection, but the mirror glaze. Anyways though, now we're just going to pour this into our Pyrex. I'm going to fill it up to the two cup mark. Now I have a baking sheet lined with aluminum foil to catch any drips. And just place a cooling rack over top. Then with the very fancy double spatula technique, you're just going to gently lift the cake to your cooling rack. It shouldn't be too hard to get it off of your turntable because it is frozen solid. Once you have one spatula out, just stick one finger underneath and drop it. Perfect. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, it is mirror glaze time. And this is just mesmerizing. I have no commentary. Really, this is just, oh, oh my gosh. Mirror glaze is the coolest thing ever. Looks like a print almost. It looks so cool dripping down like that. Oh, I love this. If you can't tell already, I'm very excited by this video. All right, now we're just gonna transfer this to our serving plate. Again, using that fancy double spatula technique. This one is a little bit trickier. You might mess up the side of the cake just a tad bit, but you can always touch it up with a paper towel and it's not too difficult. And there we go, that is our cake on our cake plate. Honestly, that's the hardest part of making this whole cake. It's just transferring the cake around, but really once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Now here I have some little ghost peeps and I'm just gonna trim off the bottom. This way they sit in the cake a little bit easier. They're also holding this little boo banner that's super easy to make. It's just paper and toothpicks and twine. And I'm just going to pop that into the cake. Then as a little bit of support, we're gonna take that bit that we trimmed off and just add that behind the ghosts. It should stick in pretty easily though. The mirror glaze sets tacky. Now we're going to add in a little peep marshmallow. And I stuck a green sprinkle on top of that. Then spoon over some Oreo crumbs to look like dirt. And I know there's some little brown specks behind my nails. That's just the little dirt bits. It's not real dirt. And here is the magic of the mirror glaze. You can actually see reflections in this and it is so cool. All right guys, our mirror glaze cake is finished now and it looks so cool. It is super shiny and you can definitely see reflection in it. And I really wanna do more mirror glaze cakes now because they are so easy to do. They are so much fun to watch as the glaze is being poured over them. I don't know. I'm probably just gonna watch my own clip of that like a hundred times today. And um, yep, that's my plans for the rest of today. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because I post two new videos every week. I'm gonna do my best this week to post another video. It's getting a little bit late in the week now, but I was working on a project that you guys will see very soon and I've been working really hard on it. So I hope you guys like it. And if I don't announce that this weekend, it'll be early next week. And then I'll try to do three videos to wake up for one video this week. And you really don't have to know all these details of my personal life, but um, there they are for you. <laughs> Anyways though, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at Kawaii Sweet Eats if you want to. And this week you cannot check out my website, which may or may not reveal what project I'm working on. But um, yeah, look out for that and I will see you guys all very soon. Happy Halloween!